This is a basic FPE drone available on various e-commerce websites for around $500. With some do-it-yourself modifications, it can be transformed into a dangerous weapon. First, the drone must be stripped down to reduce its weight. What remains is a lightweight carbon fiber frame with a motherboard underneath. The four powerful motors and propellers are powered by a battery mounted on top, along with an antenna. Finally, a warhead is required. This RPG, costing between $100 to $500, can be secured underneath using cable ties, turning this civilian drone into a military-grade weapon. When added together, the cost can exceed $1,000 each. In contrast, a tank which costs $4.5 million can also be destroyed while being protected with this famous upgraded cage. While it may seem simple, you must consider the back-end support required, from this long-range UAVs to FPV drones on the front line. More details all in the video ahead. Let's take a closer look at how to make this FPV or first-person view drone. First, we have the carbon fiber frame, which provides a lightweight yet strong structure. The frame is designed to withstand the stresses of high-speed flight and collisions. Next, you'll notice the four propellers, each connected to its corresponding motor. These propellers are strategically designed with opposite angles to ensure smooth and balanced flight. This counter-rotation helps the drone maintain stability and agility during flight. All of this advanced technology requires a central processor, or what can be considered the brain of the drone. This role is played by the thin motherboard placed here. As you can see, these are not covered, which helps in reducing weight. It manages all the flight operations, processes data from sensors, and translates commands from the remote control into action. Moving to the back of the drone, we find the cables that connect the motherboard to the power supply, which is provided by the battery. The battery is one of the heaviest components of the drone due to its energy density. Depending on its size and capacity, the battery can power the drone for anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. Next, let's move to the propellers and motors also meet power and precise instructions to function correctly. They are connected through a series of cables located here. Both supply power and transmit control signals from the flight controller. These cables are exposed to minimize weight, ensuring the drone remains as light and efficient as possible. At the front of the drone, you'll find a camera that is connected to both the motherboard and the radio receiver, allowing it to transmit live video footage back to the pilot. This SEB enables the pilot to see exactly where the drone is flying in real time, providing crucial visual information for navigation and target acquisition. However, modern warfare has introduced new challenges. For instance, Russian forces are increasingly utilizing electronic warfare systems. These systems work by jamming the radio signals between the drone and its pilot, effectively disrupting communication and control. When this happens, the pilot loses the ability to see and control the drone, which can lead to mission failure. To counter these tactics, the Ukrainians have developed an effective solution, deploying an additional drone to act as a signal enhancer. This secondary drone strengthens the connection between the primary drone and the pilot, ensuring a stable link even in the presence of electronic interference. By boosting the signal, this method helps to neutralize the impact of the enemy's electronic warfare units. With this enhanced connection, the pilot regains control and can continue to maneuver the drone toward its designated target maintaining operational effectiveness despite the enemy's attempts to jam communications. Finally, we have the warhead located here at the bottom. This particular weapon is an RPG or in full form rocket propelled grenade. If we take a closer look inside, we can find the piezoelectric trigger. This trigger mechanism is housed within the RPG warhead and features an air filled cavity with a conical liner. However, this trigger might not function as intended if the drone is moving too slowly or if it strikes a solid mass, like a tank not in full force. In such cases, the piezoelectric trigger may fail to activate. To address this, an additional trigger mechanism has been installed at the front of the warhead to ensure it detonates on impact either manually by the operator. Let's examine this warhead more closely. At the front, you'll find the piezoelectric trigger. The piezoelectric trigger is a device that generates a voltage when subjected to deformation, exploiting the piezoelectric effect. Its purpose is to measure changes in pressure, acceleration, temperature, strain, or force by converting these changes into an electrical charge. Just behind it, there is an air-filled cavity and a conical liner. This explosive is intentionally inverted, and this configuration is designed to create a high-velocity jet of heat. 
This jet is meant to penetrate lightly armored vehicles or in some cases can even damage a main battle tank. Once the booster propels the rocket out of the tube, the fins on the rocket open up to stabilize its flight path for its intended target. Remember the warhead or grenade we talked about earlier? This is how it works. It first hits the piezoelectric trigger, which activates the detonator. The warhead along with this conical liner converges to create a jet of steel and heat ready to penetrate a steel armor plate or vehicle. The drone can also be equipped with different types of ammunition. One option is the shotgun effect, where the blast scatters shrapnel over a wide area, increasing the chances of hitting enemy soldiers. This mechanism can be manually triggered by the operator, allowing for greater control and creating a more significant impact on the battlefield. Not all drones are capable of destroying tanks, but there is a specific strategy we can explore to address this challenge. Tanks have several weak spots, with the most vulnerable being the top section or the hatch. This area has much thinner armor compared to the rest of the tank and can be easily penetrated. Another weak point is the engine section, also if struck from the top. Targeting this area can disable the tank on the battlefield, leaving it vulnerable to follow-up attacks by another FPV drone. However, what happens if the tank is equipped with a cage or has been upgraded with makeshift armor, like this do-it-yourself cage tank here? There is a solution to counter this. In such cases, two or three drones would be launched. The first drone is tasked with disabling or punching a hole through the cage, while the second accompanying drone can then strike and either damage or destroy the tank effectively. This seemingly simple, low-budget setup is more complicated than it appears at the back end. We are now at the front line. Here we see a Russian T-80 tank positioned right beside Russian trenches well dug for cover. Just one or two kilometers further back lies the Ukrainian trench. Moving two to five kilometers away from the front line, we find these short-range drones, also known as FPV, stationed here. Further back, we reach the long-range drone headquarters, and finally, we arrive at the brigade headquarters. Let's take a look at how this system operates. In step one, at around 25 kilometers from the front line, a communication drone will ascend to about 2,500 meters. This drone scans the battlefield and transmits the target coordinates to the FPE drones. Moving to step two. Once the drones identify a target, be it troops, vehicles, or artillery, the crews relay the coordinates to their commanders. Step three. The commanders then receive the target information and decide whether to initiate a strike. Finally, at step four. Once the command is given, the drone is deployed and dives straight into a high-value target, such as a tank. The first step in countering drones with electronic warfare involves employing an electronic warfare truck, which can be highly effective within a radius of approximately 10 kilometers, or about 6.2 miles. This capability is critical for the protection of high-value assets, such as advanced air defense systems like the S-300. These systems are not only essential for national defense, but are also significant investments, with a basic unit typically costing around $150 million. The second phase of electronic warfare against drones relies on the system's ability to emit multiple powerful radio waves. His waves are designed to overwhelm and disrupt the communication signals of first-person view drones, which rely on steady radio connections to operate effectively. By overpowering the drone's control frequencies, the electronic warfare system creates an environment where enemy drones struggle to maintain functionality. In the final stage, once a drone enters the area covered by the electronic warfare system, it loses its link to the pilot, rendering it uncontrollable. At this point, the drone either crashes to the ground or continues to follow its last received command as it is no longer able to link further instructions. In response to the increasing challenges posed by electronic warfare systems, Ukraine and Russia are racing to develop drones guided by artificial intelligence. Let's take a closer look at how this works. Imagine this dome as the area where the electronic warfare unit is located. As soon as the artificial intelligence automatically identifies a high-value target, it locks onto it. The drone is immune to jamming because once it locks onto the target, no further contact with the pilot is necessary. It then dives straight into the target even without any radio signals. We also make original engineering content, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.